Good morning. It's uh, almost sunrise. <clears throat> Friday, November 3rd. In my last video, I was very angry about the whole Jewish situation. And I couldn't stay on point. I failed to finish a statement I began. I'm going to do it now as quickly as possible. And this is about racism, because that's what the last one was about, was racism against we Jews, etc. And <clears throat> I am the son of William Wayne Kruger Sr. The, oh my gosh, sixth of, fifth of seven William Waynes from coming down from William Wayne Hill. Anyway, my point was that my father, actually when my father died, he was such a well-loved man. We had to hold three standing room only overflowing out into the streets, couldn't park a mile away and get there before we moved to the next one, trying to accommodate all the people, including senators and judges and yada, yada, that wanted to come to my father's funeral. My father was a very humble man. And as I told you, but let me, he was born, I'm going to talk a bit about Texas culture and how it's really changed and stuff. Yeah, you know, you know, a lot of y'all talk about like racism in Texas. You know, that racism mostly came here with the carpet baggers. Trust me, Yankees were far more racist than we ever were. My father was born on what I'm pretty sure is part of his grandfather's from his mother. Uh, uh, part of his uh, huge plantation that extended from Burleson into Lee County. My father was born in Beat Patch Number no. 5, Lee County. Just known as Beat 5 on maps and to the locals. And it was a mixed race community of black and white farmers. I'm pretty sure my grandfather, Kruger, married into the Hill family. He was a big, strong German workaholic, like my dad. And, you know, I'm not even sure if I know his full name, but he married one of the Hill daughters, William Wayne Hill, whose brother-in-law was Stephen Fuller Austin. But, I know that area well and stuff like that. And there was, but my point was, is in those days, because I got to keep this short so people will watch the whole thing. Please. Let me, and back in the day, I was a little kid. I began walking and talking very early. My dad just loved that. It's, he didn't, you know, he expressed it in different ways. Like always, he liked to take me with him when we take trips. He would, he liked to take trips alone and stuff sometimes and sometimes he'd go like hey let's go see the darkies over in dime box because dime box was brown's mill brown and root are my cousins okay they got the iraq contract because they're the only i mean my family built the the international highways the major dams laid the pipelines on this planet got the iraq contract no bid because they are the only ones with the logistical know-how and ability to get it done. Dime Box, Texas, which is named after the postman bought his weekly dime box of snuff there when he would drop off the mail, was originally known as Brown's Mill. We brought in the Browns to mill timber and other things for us. So my dad grew up around black people, very friendly. My dad was, like me, a very gregarious person, sociable person, didn't, and he, that's what he'd say, is it, hey, he'd nudge me and go, let's go see the darkies over in, in, in Dime Box, when I was only like three or four years old, I mean, like, this is 1957, 58, when black people were to address all white people as sir, ma'am, uh, miss, or little mister, or, you know, or they could be subject to arrest for 
a disorderly conduct by what was a, uh, a Yankee-controlled educational system and government. <clears throat> Been taken over by and molded by it. And yet I noticed it, because they certainly did around the Bryan College Station area. They always addressed my dad as Mr. Wayne. And when we'd go over to Dime Box, they'd see us coming. I'd be standing on the seat and looking, hanging out the window and stuff. And we would go into the little, kind of the black section of Dime Box. And we dad would park and get out. And the minute my dad would get out and stuff like that, all the like the black men would be hanging out in front of a place where, you know, old men tend to, you know, meet and congregate and chat about times and things that had passed and whatever. And I noticed that that they would address my father's, hey boy. And for those of you who are not from Texas, the original colony was right over there where the original Texas culture developed. You know, you call everybody, sir, ma'am, miss, or mister. Little boys, or you address four-year-old boys as mister, master. Unless you're familiar. And the highest form of familiarity and friendship is to holler out, hey boy, or hey girl. You see old people doing it, that's to let each other, let the everybody around them know that they are friends, they respect each other, and they love each other. So in my father's day, black people addressed my father as, hey boy. So just trying to hip all you newcomers to here to Dell Central and Tech Central here in Pflugerville, which is, you're the kind of people we, well, some of y'all are, that we wanted to get in here, bring here and provide, you know, that was part of our, you know. So that just kind of finishes the thought is that y'all don't really know anything about Texas. I may talk more about Texas history because I know it better than anyone. All the Texas genealogy, the best-selling Amazon book on Amazon for like a decade, she had it all wrong. And I have seen very few uh, maps or plats of uh, Texas territories and colonies and stuff that are accurate. They, everybody wants to write it from their family's perspective, the Johnny Come Latelys, and they keep trying to leave out us, we, the Little Ten. And in the Little Ten colony, in the very heart, and on the first, Stephen F. Austin's first four league grant, the heart of which is Dime Box, Brown's Mill, Brown and Root. Yeah, by the way, Rick Perry's my cousin. Yeah, and my cheerleader, and yada, yada. But in the very heart of Texas, black men addressed my father as, hey boy. So there's a little update on, for all you people that are newcomers, Johnny Come Lately's. Yeah. The racism that you see in Texas, it came here after us. It is not us really. And this new form of black racism, the black Hebrew Israelite Christian Muslims. But I'll finish with this at 10 minutes. I went too, way too long, but. Back in the day, 50s, 60s, before, long before that, because my father was born in 1905. My perspective is way different than most of you. I know I have empirical knowledge transmitted to me that goes back into the 1800s of the firsthand observers of Texas cultures and Texas going on. So I have a unique perspective that Josh should maybe listen to. Hey boy, hey girl.